All right, we're going to go ahead and continue scale drawings, and a scale drawing is kind of like a map. Uh, you have a map, and obviously the map is not as big as the terrain that it covers or the earth that it covers, so you have to have a scale. Or you have to have something showing you, hey, this represents one inch, for example, represents uh, this much, um, represents this much land or this much or this distance. So we also have scale drawings for things like insects and all kinds of things. We have scales for uh, model cars. I know a lot of people don't put those together anymore like they did when I was little. But um, here we have a scale of four millimeters equals one centimeter. What it's saying here is Travis made a scale drawing of a horse fly. So what is the actual wingspan? We're saying, well, this is kind of like our map here, and this measures 22 uh, millimeters across. And what we're saying is that 4 millimeters on the scale, or on the map, or on the drawing, is in reality 1 centimeter. So what we have to do is we have to read this scale and figure out how big this fly actually is. Now, of course, this isn't drawn to scale because I've blown it up here and all that. But what you really need to do when you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're trying to find the actual length, when you're trying to find the actual length here, what you need to do is make yourself a proportion, label it, and first you need to do the scale. And almost always you're going to have a scale of some distance equals um, uh, one. One centimeter, for example, equals this, or uh, more often than not, it's, it's one inch will equal 10 miles or something like that. So what you need to do first is this. Anytime you're given the scale, go ahead and make that into a proportion and label it. And right here we're going to put, remember how we always label it, millimeters, that didn't look good, millimeters over inches. Okay. Millimeters is four here. I'm sorry, millimeters over centimeters. And this is one. Could I have done one over four? You bet. I, as long as I remain consistent throughout the proportion, again, it does not matter. Again, we label it because we can put the 22 right here. Put that over X. Now all we do is simply cross multiply and solve for X like we've been doing ever since we got back from holiday break. This is going to be 4X equals 22. Then, of course, we're going to divide both sides by 4. This, of course, is going to cancel out. We're going to have 22 in the house divided by 4. Let's go ahead and put ourselves a few decimals here. And this unit, you're going to be dealing with decimals and fractions, by the way. So you're going to have to know how to negotiate those. You're going to have to know how to work with those, in other words. 4 won't go into 2, but it will go into 25 times. Remember, it is an essential skill that you understand how to work with fractions and decimals. 5.5. So the answer is, we're missing centimeters, so the actual length is 5.5 .5 centimeters. Again, this will make a lot more sense on a map or a scale drawing of a house. For example, architects use scale drawings all the time when they make blueprints, or what used to be blueprints for a house. They'll give you a scale. One, one inch on the, on, the, on the blueprint will actually equal maybe 10 feet or something like that. Because it's obviously they can't draw the entire house Otherwise, they'd have to have a piece of paper as big as the house. So they have to shrink it a little bit. All right. Number two, the scale, and, and there's no drawing here, so it tells you the scale of a map is one and a fourth inches equals 100 miles. Well, we, we, we know we've got one fraction already. So let's go ahead and let's say the map, the scale is, and let's make a fraction. We're going to go ahead and put inches over miles, and we know we're going to end up having two fractions here, and again, we're asking what is the actual distance. If you're having the actual distance, all you got to do is set up a proportion. Put in what you know. This is 1 and 1 over 4, over 100. But what we're saying is, on the map, these two places are 4 and 8 inches apart. All right, so if you're looking at the map, you've got these two cities. Uh, they're four and eight inches apart. We're going to put four and eight up here. We're trying to figure out in reality how much that is. Okay. Now, this is going to be a bit of a booger if you have to convert it into a decimal. This is why I've been telling you ever since the beginning of the year, you need to memorize like you used to memorize your times tables. 
you need to memorize your fractions, your simple ones. Okay. The easiest thing for you to do, in my opinion here, is to, you, you can go ahead and convert that to an improper fraction if you want to, or you can convert it to a decimal. I prefer converting it to a decimal. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my stuff here. I'm going to say 1.25. And remember, if you don't know that 1 fourth is 0.25, all you've got to do is divide the top by the bottom and get a decimal. And make sure you keep your 1. This is over 100. 4 and 1 eighth is actually 4.125 over x. Again, if you wanted to put 1 in the house and divide that out, you would get 0.125. And don't forget the 4, though. Now all we do is cross multiply. 1.25x equals 100 times 4.125. 4, 1, 2, 5, times 100. One thing you can do when you're multiplying by 100, you can always just move the decimal place twice and make that 412.5. You can either do that or you can do it the long way. It doesn't matter to me. And remember, that only works with 110 and 1,000 and so on. So now we've got our one-step equation, which I've told you you must know how to do. We're going to divide both sides by 1.25. Why are we dividing? Because what's happening to our poor little x is being multiplied by 1.25. The opposite of that is dividing by 1.25. 1.25. So now we've got to deal with that guy. And that, again, that's a tough one. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a division problem. 412.5. Let's go ahead and add a few zeros. We might need them. And then 1.25. Well, we can't divide by a decimal, so we've got to move this guy over and to move this guy over. Since we moved this over twice, we've got to move this one over twice. So now we've got a pretty sizable problem. But as smart little seventh graders, we should be able to do this. We should be able to deal with large, long division problems like such. I'm going to go ahead and erase these lines to make it a little bit simpler for you. So now we've got 40,000, or 41,250. This is going to go in here, uh, hmm. what is that, about three times? Let's try it on. a humdinger. Three hundred and thirty. Now, that's not the end. The answer is what is the actual distance? Because we were looking four miles, we need to make sure we put that unit on there. So the answer is three hundred and thirty miles. Okay. Asia made a scale drawing of her bedroom using a scale of 0.5 centimeters equals a meter. So we're going to put centimeters here and one meter here. I, I, I don't know if they're going to ask you questions like this on the CRC or not. I generally don't like it when you don't have that being a one whole unit. It's usually one inch, one centimeter, uh, one millimeter or so on equals something. But here they decided to give you a 0.5 centimeter. So you got to deal with that. So basically what we're saying is, 0.5 centimeters equals 1 meter. The actual length of her bedroom is 4.5 meters. Now look, the reason why you label it this is simple. The reason why I've been teaching you to label it this simple is because on some of the other problems they're a little bit easier not to get confused. These are very easy to get confused. It would be very easy for you to put 4.5 up here. So look, 4.5 meters, we know that meters is on bottom. We have an X here. And we're simply going to multiply 1 times x is x, or 1x. And then all you've got to do is multiply 0 0.5 times 4.5. So we're going to do that. The good news is, this one step equation you don't have to solve for because the x is already by itself. So we got 4.5 times 5. That's 5, carry my 2. 
This is nine. Um, oops, sorry. Twenty-two. Move my decimal place over one, two places for an answer of 2.25. Remember, we were looking for uh, centimeters. Now, you're saying, why is it centimeters? Well, I'm looking for the actual length of Asia's bedroom on the actual scale, on the actual blueprint or whatever you're calling it. That's why the answer is in centimeters, and it confirms that by this because we, that's what we were looking for anyway. So all you got to do, if you can do a proportion, which most of you can do by now, and we've been doing them forever, if you can set up a proportion and do your math correctly, and just set it up correctly, you'll be in really good shape for these. Now, these are a little bit more difficult. Number five is asking you, the length between the bases on a major league diamond is 90 feet. So if you want to draw a picture here, most of us are familiar with baseball, even though maybe we don't like it. The distance between first base and home plate is 90 feet. And this is 90, and this is 90, and this is 90. Alvin wants to make a scale drawing of a baseball field. If the bases are two and a half inches apart, so in other words, if we're looking at a map of the baseball field, and this is actually two and one half inches apart, we want to know what is his scale. In other words, we want to set it equal to one inch equals however many feet. What is his scale? What is his scale? So now, instead of me asking you to fill in the blanks with, with what are the measurements, I'm asking you to actually come up with a scale. So this is a little bit more difficult. All you have to do is remember this. And let's just say we're going to put uh, inches over feet. Well, we know two of those. We know that two and one half equals 90. If I'm asking you for the scale, 99 times out of 100, when I'm asking you to make a scale for me, I'm asking you to say 1 inch equals how many feet or however many, whatever. Usually the small one is going to be the one with 1. So what I'm trying to find out is, hey, if I wanted to make myself a scale, and I wanted to put it at the bottom of this so people could read it, 1 inch equals how many feet? Now we've got a proportion and we can do it just like we've done it before. And again, we would cross multiply, remembering that we would have to negotiate or deal with, in other words, our fractions. I would go ahead and convert that to 2.5 and multiply it by x and get 2.5x right here, plus 90 times 1 equals 90. Then we're going to divide both sides by 2.5, like so. And then we put the 90 in the house, put the 2.5 on the outside, but we can't divide by that. We've got to move that over. We've got to move this guy over too. So now we've got 25 into 900. 25 won't go into 9, but we'll go into 93 times. This is 75. 15. Bring down my, sorry, bring down my 0. 25 will go into 150 about, I think, six times. Let's try it out. Yes, for 150. So, the answer is not just 36. The answer is, I'm asking you for the scale. So the scale will be 1 inch equals 36 feet. And again, sometimes I'm going to be asking you for the scale, and that's how you'll set it up. Two fields of a state park are 1,200 meters from each other. On the map, the two fields are 8 centimeters apart. What scale is the map using? So again, if I'm asking you what scale is the map using, I'm going to say 1 over something. Well, what are we dealing with here on the map? 8 centimeters equals 1,200 miles. That's all we would have to do. We know these two things. We need to know what one centimeter equals. We want to know what the scale is. So we're going to have 8x equals 1,200. We're going to 
divide both sides by 8. And that will come out to be, if you do the math on that, 150. For the sake of time, I'm not going to do that division problem. We should all be able to divide 1,200 by 8. And uh, my numbers are just a touch. This is actually number. This is actually number six on yours, and this will be number seven. Now, this is one of those where we really need to make sure we pay attention and look at the whole thing before we try to start. Our scale is already given for us. We've got one fraction already there for us. Done. It says the length of the kitchen floor is one and a half inches. And then we've got our scale here. What is the actual length of the kitchen floor? Okay, well what it's saying is, if I were to take this map and to measure it from here to here, it's going to be at one and a half inches. So we want to know, well look, basically how many quarter inches are in an inch and a half? That's what we're doing. So all I need to do again is set up a proportion. We're going to put inches over feet. We're going to say one over four equals four feet. We're going to say one and one half because those are inches over x. And again, this is where you really need to learn your fractions. I am going to go ahead and convert that because to me it's much easier. I'm going to say inches over feet equals 0.25 over four and 1.5 So this is the easy part. We got 0.25x equals now 4 times 1 and a half. Well, let's go over here and do that. 1.5 and 4. That's 0, 2. Uh, what is that? 6. Move my decimal place over one time. 0.25 equals 6. Well, just because we're dealing with a decimal here doesn't mean we do anything any different. Our x is being multiplied by 0.25. We're going to divide by 0.25. Okay. This eliminates. Now we got the x by itself. Now all we got to do is divide that 6 by 0.25. Now if you want to look at this the easy way, you can say, look, how many quarters are in $6? Or if you want to just divide it out, which will probably be the safest bet. I'm going to go ahead and add me a few zeros here. I've got to move that guy over twice. That means I got to move this guy over twice, which means now my new is 25 into 600. This will go in here twice without going over. That's 50. That's 10. Bring down my zero. This is four. Therefore, my answer is the actual length of the kitchen is 24 feet. Why? Because it's logical. Number one, and number two, that's what we were looking for here. Bella made a drawing of her rectangular bedroom in which the scale is one inch equals three feet. The drawing was six inches long by four feet wide. We want to know what the dimensions of the room were. All the dimensions means is, hey, what is... How, you know, how many feet long is this room? How many feet wide is it? So basically what you're going to do is set up two proportions here. You're going to set up one with uh, the inches on top here is 6 over x. Then you're going to set up one over here, 1 over 3 equals um, 4 over x. And then you're going to cross multiply and solve. That's all you would do. So here you're going to be left with, this is x equals 3 times 6 is 18. So we got one dimension there. Here we're left with x, because 1 times x is x, 3 times 4 is 12. So the dimensions are 18 feet by 12 feet. What is the area of Bella's room? Well, we find area, and we're going to cover this a little bit next week, but to find area, and I'll give you the equations, you're simply going to multiply the length times the width. That's all you do. So you would say 18 times 12. 
let's go ahead and figure that out now. When we're figuring out area, we say length times width. So 18 times 12, that's 6. Carry my 1, that's a 3. 0, 18 here. 6, a 1, 1, 2 for an area of 216. Let me just double check my math on my calculator. And finally, the last one I'm going to let you do on your own. You have this, again, I don't like that. It's two inches. But again, you would set it up the same way. Two over 75 over 575. X, cross multiply, and come up with your answer.